Well, here's someone who understands what it takes to be a world champion. Perdita Felicien won that title in the 100-meter hurdles back in 2003. Thanks for joining us. Pleasure. So four gold medals and two silvers at these track and field championships. How significant is this? Well, that's the best that Canada has ever done in its history, right? At the world championships in track and field. And, you know, if you want to add in their seven personal best to Canadian records, it is outstanding. As far as the medal standings, they're number two. As far as placings, like points where everyone finished, they're sixth. That is a massive improvement for them over, you know, its history. That's huge. You know, over the years, we've had a few superstars, yourself, uh, Donovan Bailey, uh, Andre de Grasse, but, but this kind of widespread success in some events that Canada has not done podium finishes in, what do you attribute that to? Yeah, I've been saying all week, like, move over hockey. What? Here's hammer throw, <laughs> right? So they really put the field in track and field. I attribute to a few things. The athletes and their coaches are working hard. But if you want to know a little bit more about that, it's because Athletics Canada has actually modernized its system. It has a brilliant high-performance director named Simon Nathan, who used to work at Athletics Australia. You know how great Australia is at sports. Before that, UK Athletics. And he really has a transparent system that supports the athletes. The athletes are constantly in touch with the Federation. They know what performance metrics they need to they need to meet in order to maintain their funding and there's you know at least three that i know of high performance hubs all throughout canada so if you need an mri if you need sports psychology you have access to those things now the system honestly is also very transparent back in my day you never really understood what was going on with the federation you don't didn't always know where you stood and here the athletes have excellent support and excellent transparency that's really interesting insight. Um, let me ask you about Andre de Grasse, one of the greatest sprinters in the world, multiple Olympic medals, but no podium finishes at this tournament. What should we make of that? Yeah, I think, you know, if you're a huge Andre de Grasse fan, like most of us are, it's really disappointing to know that he didn't finish on the podium. He's been flawless when it comes to that. I think Andre has had a lot of championships in his legs. He's had a lot of performances and, you know, our favorites don't always win, right? And also he is just, he's getting older. And so all is not lost. I think he's going to gather momentum from this season, even though he didn't finish on the podium. And he's really going to have to put his head down, him and his team, figure out what's not working, figure out what they, they need to do and try to go out on top. This is not the way an Andre de Grasse wants to leave his legacy, wants to leave his career. So for Paris... They're really going to go back to the drawing board in a lot of things. 30 seconds left. Let's just finish with this. The two greatest decathletes in the world this weekend are Canadian, Perdita. <laughs> How crazy and amazing is that, Damien and, of course, Pierce. I'm happy for them. I'm proud of them. They are the best athletes in the world because that's what you give the, uh, the greatest decathlon in the world. You give them the title of, of world's greatest athlete. I think Damien would have been upset with silver, on any other day, but because it's Pierce Lepage, his good friend, his younger brother, I'd say, I think he's pleased with that. So look out for Paris. I think they could do it again. You were a great hurdler and you're a fantastic analyst, Perdita. Thanks for speaking with us. Pleasure.